Well, good morning. And welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. On the behalf of the congregation and the friends and family, we come here to celebrate the life of Sister Karen. A few things I'd like to let you know. I am Pastor Marv Combs. Pastor Steve and Pastor Bob are here. You'll find them in, listed here in the bulletin. Everything you need will be in the bulletin. Anytime there's something you need to be prompted to do, you will see it there as marked in bold with where it says people. Uh, important stuff first, the restrooms. Uh, out these doors, that would be to, as the ladies, is to your right, my left. Men uh, in the north, go in the narthex would be to the left. I would ask you to please silence your cell phones. I always say that to the whole, con the whole congregation gathered, knowing it's usually the pastor who forgets to turn his off, and during the middle of the sermon, his phone goes off. We will have a, this time here together, and then we will, after this service, we will move over to the fellowship hall, Cross Hope Hall, where we'll have a meal and continue with our celebration of Karen's life there. You'll find that there is an insert in your bulletin that says memories of Karen Merkel. If you'd like to jot down a few thoughts, a few memories, a few treasures of, that you hold, right outside in the narthex on this side over here, there is a table with a basket that you can put these in and we will collect them. Again, I thank you for being here today. We all have such special memories of Karen, how she has touched us in so many ways. And it's amazing in my travels throughout this whole area how many times I happen to mention, mention something about Karen and oh yes, we, we love her too. So uh, let us get to come together today to remember her and remember the Christ and who she had her faith in. Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. When I read this, little italicized sentence in the bulletin, 
about speaking to reflect on our relationship with Christ that begins in baptism, continues through life, I thought of this. I thought of a quote from 10 years ago at the 75th anniversary of the World Mission Prayer League. Margaret Lindell called this commissioned living. We are about commissioned living. And I'll take a moment to reflect on the verse that's the the words that are in the bulletin here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Karen Merkel. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our journey on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life and continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If there ever was a scripture that characterizes Karen, this certainly has to be one of them. From Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I'm ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, And I live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And guess what? Karen did. Verse from Romans 10, 13 through 15, and verse 17. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have never heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who who bring the good news. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. This reading is from Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, 
to the very end of the age. These verses were Karen's eternal calling verses. I invite you to stand as you're able. seated. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Well, what a privilege to honor our God today as we honor and remember Karen. And what a blessing as I interact with people. I just see the, the caliber of folks and the strength of faith that the friends of, of Karen have. And that's a testimony to her witness. Uh, and we want to give honor to glor- and glory to God today. It's only fitting that we praise Praise God. And this scripture from Revelation, it kind of opens the heavens to us and gives us a glimpse of what the kingdom is like. And we're humbled by the sight in awe of God. It pulls something out from within us when we get these glimpses of heaven. It calls to something greater. And Karen saw that 
vision, uh, the vision of all these tribes, all these peoples before God. And it did something to her, reading all these scriptures when she was a young teenager. And she answered that call that came to her and went to spread the good news to all the world. And it seems as in this reading, when something big is happening in the kingdom, palm branches are waved. It will be bringing, waving palm branches uh, tomorrow. Uh, you'll be waving them here, I imagine. And, uh, and there in heaven, they were waving palm branches, praising God. And this uh, today, it's easy to talk about Karen. Uh, sometimes for us pastors, there are funerals or memorials that are a little tougher, huh? We don't know the people as well, but um, today we come with great confidence in the promises of God. We know the direction that Karen's life was pointing. We know where her hope was, so we have this great confidence in the promises of God. We're grateful for that. Well, I was a pastor in Phoenix when uh, my family and I were there, and I would come out once in a while to California for a a leadership conference, and that's where I first met Karen and Sue, uh, these good friends, and through that connection, uh, my family and I moved up to Sunnyvale, and I pastored at, at Sue's church for 23 years there in Sunnyvale, and I'm so grateful for that connection and these friendships that have lasted for more than a quarter of a century. My wife Amy pointed out that Karen was always helping people to move to the next step in their walk with God, and that was true for me, for us as a family, and maybe some of you can attest to that as well, uh, that Karen was always kind of seeing into you a little bit and seeing what might be the next step and kind of nudging you like a good shepherd dog, you know, pushing you in the, in the right direction toward God and God's purposes uh, for you. Uh, well, Karen was always seeking that next uh, step in her walk with Jesus. And then once it became clear, she was faithful to respond boldly. Uh, she put, put her trust in the Lord early in life and that call never left her. She, she continued with it, and we thank God for that. This one scripture from Isaiah, uh, thank you for reading that so, so beautifully. And here's Isaiah seeing the Lord high and lifted up on the throne. And when we get a glimpse of God, it, it does humble us. And he, he's, he's lost. He says, who, who am I? Uh, I'm an unclean person. My lips are unclean. I, I live among these people that don't follow you faithfully. Uh, what could I possibly do? But then God so mercifully comes and, and touches his lips with this coal and says, your sins are forgiven. And out of that wonderful act of grace and this awesome sight of God, Isaiah said, says, uh, here am I, send me. And that happens for, for each of us as we respond to the Holy Spirit's work within us. And Karen had this sense of God's holy presence. She kind of felt like she was walking in God's presence all, all the time. And, and that did move her to preach all over the world, but also right here at home. Huh? She preached right here quite often. Worship on Wednesdays, anybody come to that? Quite a few hands out there, and uh, she loved to preach at that service, and she was a pioneer, you know, the preaching the way that she did, and at the time that she did, she was a pioneer, uh, breaking through in so many ways, and, and you were a part of that, uh, giving her opportunity, and we would often pray for her. We'd be up at Bible study in Sunnyvale on Wednesday mornings and we'd have prayer at the beginning and often Sue would ask for prayer for Karen. She might have just come from a phone call with Karen as she's preparing to preach and in those last years it was a challenge. Her health was making it difficult. I don't know what percentage of her heart was still working but she was operating on uh, not a full tank there in in the heart uh, area. She had had so many surgeries and miraculous recoveries, and Sue will probably talk more about that. But we felt connected to you uh, up at our church there as we were praying for you as you'd worship on Wednesdays. 
And no matter what, if it was a struggle for her, she was always enthusiastic, wasn't she? Uh, Few were close enough to see Karen at her times of weakness. For most of us, when you're with Karen, she was energized. Huh? Her face was bright, uh, that big smile, and she was on her toes, just kind of going like this because the energy was just there, and she was, it was like she was ready to lift off and just go to heaven. Heaven was calling, and that energy was, was moving her. And she was a people person. Huh? She loved people. She loved all of you. Um, she loved to get together for a meal. Anybody go out for a meal with Karen? Quite a few of us. That was a special thing. And when you'd sit down, Karen, when the server would come over, Karen would have some very specific instructions, right, for the server and get that all straightened out. And it's good to know what you want, what you need, and be able to communicate that clearly. And Karen set a good example uh, with that. But then once she got all that squared away, then it was all about you and these amazing questions that she would have about your life and interest in your life and the, just the spirit at work and this fellowship of the saints which is such a great gift uh, that we have. And it, when we were up in Sunnyvale, if we'd get together, when Karen would come up for a visit, we would usually go to Kabul, an Afghan restaurant, and get uh, Kabili Palau, which is a wonderful meal. And, and of course, Sue and Karen had been to Afghanistan, so they had all their stories to make it even more real. And there was always a sto- story about being in, in some far off land and the great adventures uh, that made it so enjoyable. Karen would go anywhere. Uh, It didn't matter how dangerous or undesirable in the eyes of most, she was ready to go. And Sue, sometimes somewhat reluctantly, but she would be right there, (laughs) right there too, uh, as her faithful companion, driver, and photographer. And they were a dynamic duo. And they went out to encourage people serving Jesus in the farthest corners of the earth. Karen visited us, our family, when we were down in Mexico serving with the World Mission Prayer League, and I remember what an encouragement she was to us. It was like a a cool drink of water in a desert on a hot day when Karen came down, and some of you maybe have served in the foreign field, but you get pretty lonely, and when you hear a, a familiar voice, a friendly voice, such an encouragement And Karen and Sue did that for so many people, serving in places uh, just way far flung, away from anything familiar. And Karen spoke of Jonah. Remember, she preached at a a conference that that we had, and she spoke about Jonah and and how God's grace overcame Jonah's stubbornness. And I'll never forget that. And she could be an encourager because she knew the struggles. She knew what it was to be lonely out there on the mission field. She knew what it was to struggle with health issues, which almost every missionary does. Uh, she had her, her dark places, her places of pain and doubt, as we all do and all great saints do. Her health was a challenge Some relationships were challenging at times, but like Paul, she could say, when I am weak, then I am strong. And she really exemplified those verses. Well, that, those verses from Romans 10, what an encouragement uh, those are, uh, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's a great message about salvation, coming to the Lord for the first time. But it's for our lives every day, isn't it? We need salvation every day. And Karen knew what it was to call on the Lord and be saved every day, every moment. She was a great woman of prayer. Prayer was such a part of her life. And I don't think any of us will know, only she and God knows the depths of her prayers in those quiet places, in those dark places, at those tough times. But she knew she was never alone. The Lord was with her. Uh, the The Lord that she communed with regularly <clears throat> and so Matthew 28 uh, I know had great meaning for her throughout her life uh, the disciples are in, still in a place of confusion when this is when Jesus speaks these words they they aren't sure what it's all about yet they had the Holy Spirit hasn't uh, come to enter them yet their confusion is uh, kind of at a peak maybe when he says surely I am with you to the very end of the age 
as you do what I'm telling you to go and tell and baptize and teach all these things that I've taught you. But Jesus is with us. He's with us right to the end and beyond. He's our best friend. And he teaches us about friendship. When I think of good friendships, I think of the relationship between Christ and the church for each of us to think of Jesus as our our best friend. And I can't think of a a better example of friendship than Karen and Sue. Uh, When I think of one, I think of the other and can't think of one without the other. Like David and Jonathan, always supporting one another, always there to defend one another, outdoing one another in showing honor, which is fun to watch. Uh, Great joy in the fellowship Uh, difficulty being separated as it always is when you have a great friend something that's hard for the world to understand because it's so uncommon but I'm so grateful that such friendships exist in the world and it speaks to me again of our relationship with God this wonderful friendship that we have that we're that close and there's joy in that togetherness in fellowship with God and with all the saints despite our our differences of various kinds. I want to conclude by going back to that Revelation text, uh, the vision of heaven which is right here in our midst if we have the eyes to see it. Salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. And God is doing a great work in the world today and you and I get to be a part of it. I think that's what Karen would be saying to us if she were here today, uh, we are part of this great commission. We are part of what God is doing in the world. But she would say it from her (laughs) tiptoes. And we thank God for sending Jesus as our Savior. And we fall before the throne along with the heavenly creature saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Jesus was the energy in Karen. He's the one who unites us all in a common mission to love God, love our neighbor, lift up the fallen, care for those in need, support one another. We only have a short time. Use that time well. Don't waste it in anger or bitterness, but rather in thanksgiving and joy. Share the light of Jesus in simple ways. Some people think missionaries are always about the grand and the glorious, these big gestures, but... That's really a small part of the work. Mostly it's just simple life lived by faith. How do we greet the people we meet on the road? How do we care for our our neighbor? How do we treat the people in our own household? And the light shines through us uh, in those simple ways. And so that's accessible to all of us. So may we be encouraged today by the example of Karen to get a little better perspective, a little greater glimpse of heaven and a little more energy to go and share the good news of Jesus with all those we meet. Let's pray. Dear God, I I thank you so much for Karen. What an encourager she has been to all of us. What a proclaimer of the gospel, uh, a fighter, a a prayer warrior, warrior. And thank you for friends who have been by her side, especially Sue and, and others who are here all lifting her up in her times of difficulty and weakness. Bless each of us. May we see heaven and go out and share your good news in simple ways, practical ways, in whatever way you call us to. We pray, giving you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
is the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize people need the Lord?
of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in darkness sin, my hand will save. have a time of sharing. Sorry, I didn't hear the name. <laughs> I hope that's not an indication of how this talk is going to go. <laughs> Karen Merkel. Karen Merkel was, Merkel was a woman of faith, as you've already heard today already. She was a woman of God. She loved the Lord but she also loved people. And Karen was my friend, as she was for many of you here today. She knew how to be a friend. She knew how to listen. She was one of those friends who didn't get, I didn't get to see very often. But when we did get together to do lunch, maybe every six months or so, it was as if we picked up right where we left off. Laughter, tears, serious conversation, everything was brought to that table. Nothing was off limits. Hometown buffet, soup plantation. Those were some of our favorite places. They had no problem with us staying there and sitting for hours and hours. Good thing because we spent 
a lot of hours there. We had a lot to get caught up on. I'd like to go back to when I first met Karen. I met her in Bolivia, where she was serving with World Mission Prayer League, affectionately known as Wimple. I was on an LOIE, Lutheran Youth Encounter team. Little did I know the effect she would have on my life. There were many contrib contributing factors to my call to missions, but meeting Karen Merkel was one of the most profound. I had never met anyone like her. I looked up to her, but she never looked down on me. We were reunited years later at Urbana, the missions conference in Urbana, Illinois, and there we continued our friendship and also when I moved to California. Karen was an amazing person, funny, sympathetic, smart, empathetic, and kind. She's always in my heart. I will always miss her. I am forever grateful to have known Karen Merkel. To God be the glory. Thank you, Anne. And thank you, Sue, for inviting me to share today and to help lead this worship service in loving memory of Karen. Uh, my friendship with Karen started, I believe, because of a big part of our hearts are, are in South America, where where Karen started her ministries, and my experiences were in Peru and continue to be as there as I both mentor and learn from them as well. Karen mentored me for many years, like many of you, with her deep passion for God's global mission, reaching all people for Christ, and coupled with that, a profound ministry of prayer. And I was thinking about, you know, which one of those more than, but they, but they go together, don't they? Karen would invite our congregations to be part of the annual fellowship dinners here at Grace. I looked forward to each one that I could attend, and I'd bring some of the church members with me, both from Whittier and from Thousand Oaks. And Karen and Sue and this congregation, you, you put together an amazing evenings together. I always looked forward to that, even, even with the long drives for us. Karen would include these prayer quotes on the welcome page. I'm going to share the two of them. The first one is from Amy Carmichael. If you are ever inclined to pray for a missionary, do it at once, wherever you are. Perhaps he or she may be in great peril at that moment. And the other one is, prayer is the one mission to the world that all Christians can share. Through prayer, any of us can directly love the unreached, even to the ends of the earth. As far as God can go, prayer can go. And then today, I thought in honoring Karen, I would share two of my favorite quotes on prayer. You no doubt have heard them before, but I'll share them in, in honor of Karen. The first one's by Max Lucado. Our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. And the, other, the second quote is from Thomas Merton. We do not want to be beginners at prayer, but let us be convinced of the fact that we will never be anything but beginners all of our life. I had so much respect and admiration for Karen's work and for the work of the whole World Mission Prayer League. Kathy and Mark Williams, were two of the missionaries that we love to support and pray for when I was serving at St. Andrew and Whittier. So we admired your work in the Philippines. We, mi we miss Mark with you and keep you and the family in our prayers as you continue God's call upon your life. 
Karen was such an encourager to me and to you and to so many, making connections with people, encouraging people to consider mission work. That's a common story we've heard today. Karen and I shared many, so many emails back and forth about your mom, Lorna, and everything that was going through at the end of her life, about Karen's ministries, about travels with Yusu, and about various Bible studies. We both loved the Book of Jonah, too. And our work together in Southern California. And with you, we enjoyed sh you know, getting those emails where they the group emails from Valentine's Day or, or from Easter or other occasions. And I'm going to close my time with by quoting the end of her Easter sermon at St. Peter's in Santa Ana in 2014 when she wrote and she preached, We are Easter people living in a Good Friday world. May all these gifts and more that we receive because of Jesus' resurrection cause us to love and appreciate him so much that the only thing we can do is to shout out as the early Christians did, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia and Amen. Hello, my name is Leslie Yeary, a fellow worker with Karen from the World Mission Prayer League. Karen served with the World Mission Prayer League beginning in Bolivia from 1972 to 1981. After working in a church staff position for a few years, Karen felt called to return to Wimple. She reapplied for service and was appointed this time in a stateside position as the first and only Pacific Southwest Regional Coordinator. She opened her office on the campus of the Lutheran Bible Institute in California in 1987. She continued faithfully in that role and in that office until a few years ago when she transitioned to an associate in prayer and world missions with the World Mission Prayer League. Karen had always said she would never retire, and she never did. Karen and her travel companion, Sue Hutchins, were doing member care for global workers long before that was a recognized ministry. Any of our current workers of a certain age and most of those recently retired were visited at one time or another by Karen and Sue. They would then share that visit and accompanying prayer requests in the winter of the year, first as a Christmas card and then at the annual dinner. Some of the cards I remember include a manata in Kenya, the Great Wall of China, and a yurt in Mongolia. The annual dinner event that Karen would host as a regional coordinator was an opportunity for those workers on home assignment to share about their work and prayer requests. The meal was always the same as Karen was a great believer in knowing her strengths, and cooking was not one of them. <laughs> Lasagna was then followed by a powerful evangelical message from Karen. Karen's office may have been located at 641 Western Avenue but she had a second unofficial office as well. It was common to be invited by Karen to join her at Old Country Buffet for a late lunch. Here she would greet every manager, server, and busboy by name and often spend time in prayer either with or for them as needed. In addition, Karen was a frequent preacher at local churches always crafting her messages with an evangelical call. I think the words of Paul in the book of Romans were a clarion call for Karen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Karen believed in the role the local church has in preaching and sending those who are called to those who have yet to hear of Jesus. 
She also believed in the power of prayer and was passionate about praying for and with her fellow workers and believers. Many of us know that though her physical heart was fragile, her spiritual heart was strong. And we were blessed by her faith as it increased with each passing year. Chuck Lindquist, former executive director of the World Mission Prayer League, summed it best in the September issue of Together in Prayer in 2020. People who knew Karen will remember her struggle with a frail heart. She was in perpetual cardiac rehabilitation, it seemed, following some dramatic medical procedure. They will remember as well the strength of her heart committed to the cause of Jesus around the world. This is what mobilized Karen through many years of effective ministry. Her frail heart was strong for Jesus. Good morning. My name is Kathy Williams. What can I say about Karen Merkel? Karen was the first Wimple missionary that my late husband Mark and I met back in 1987 when we were working at LVIC in Anaheim, California. Karen had just become the Pacific Southwest Regional Coordinator and had arranged to open her office on our campus of LBIC. When we heard that a missionary representative was in the offices, we immediately went to visit her. She hadn't even unpacked her boxes, but yet she was standing in the midst of her office and we walked in and said, we want to be missionaries. How can that happen? And she thought, well, one, she was speechless for a moment, which is unusual <laughs> for Karen. But it was just a moment. And then she looked up and said, Lord, if it's going to be this easy, that's great. <laughs> and then she listened to our story. She arranged for a mini conference to be done that fall, uh, actually the next fall, after our son was born right there at LBI, and Chuck Lindquist came out as the personnel director to speak to a bunch of us. And we had never met the other people, but Karen had. And she brought them all together onto our campus, and we learned about the World Mission Prayer League and what they were about. And we immediately got on board. We met other people. Uh, the Lord had called Mark and I to China, but the Prayer League had no work in China at the time. So we asked if they had work in Hong Kong. No, we don't have work in Hong Kong. We asked if they had work maybe in Taiwan. No, nothing in Taiwan. And they said, but we do have work in the Philippines. And we said, where's that? <laughs> and they said, it's in Asia. And I said, close enough for me. <laughs> so uh, we went for 20 years to serve in the Philippines and Asia. And let me say, we were always a little jealous at uh, Sue and Karen's trips because the Philippines was never on their route, oh. <laughs> unfortunately. But um, when they went to China and Karen had an unfortunate accident on the wall, the Great Wall, years later, when I was at the Great Wall visiting, I watched for those potholes <laughs> because of Karen's example, even then. But the main thing I really remember about Karen is the advice that she gave us at our commissioning when we went out. We left for the Philippines in 1990. And at our commissioning, Karen, of course, gave the sermon on her toes. And she said, there will come a day in your lives when you don't want to be where you're at. You don't want to go through the pain and the trouble that's being thrown at you. And only at that time can you remember your call is what brought you there. And that will be the only thing that keeps you there. So let me just ask you, what is your call? And when you have those troubles, 
those trials, that culture you don't understand, the language that's really hard, you must cling to that call. So I want to say thank you, Karen, because I continue to cling to my call, as can all of you. Because our call doesn't change. If you're a follower of Christ, your call is to be like Christ. So lean into your call and remember Karen's advice. Because some days, the only thing that keeps you there is that call. Thank you. Those are hard acts to follow. Because... They went through a lot of what I had written last night. <laughs> All three pages. <laughs> but this morning when I woke up, God gave me something else to say. So I might read these three pages over in the hall, but God gave me the message, health challenges, and how they helped Karen expand in all of what called God had called her to do. In 1976, she came home from Bolivia, found a lump in her breast, went to the doctor, had surgery, um, and then she was praying that she'd be able to go back to Bolivia because you had to be in good health in order to be on the mission field. I didn't know her then, but I've heard the story many times about how um, her doctors came up with a way for her to do chemo with pills. And so she went to the Wimple Council and said, this is how I want to go back to Bolivia. And four months to the day of her surgery, God allowed that to happen. And that made her thrilled. She came back to the States in 81 and ended up in our church, St. Luke Lutheran Church in Sunnyvale, as our parish assistant. I met her on May 1st, 1986. And one of her friends had told her, when you're on a church staff, it's good to be friends with the treasurer. <laughs> and I was the treasurer. <laughs> but you know, being a friend with Karen was not hard. Um, our uh, the first time out together was a Lutheran day at the Oakland A's. And uh, we went there um, as good Lutherans, Karen and I, and one of our friends at St. Luke, uh, the N N Nancy Watts. And we girls had a great time. Uh, we uh, tried to fudge to get a little closer, but... Um, uh, we had a fun time, and that was the beginning of a lifelong friendship that has lasted and is still lasting 36 years. But back to the health challenges. Um, in 1995, I got a call from Karen, and she had just been to her doctor, and she had just had a treadmill test. And uh, she said, he tells me that I have a problem with my heart. So in June of 1995, she had an angioplasty. And later on that year, she was climbing Turtle Rock in Mongolia. You really couldn't keep her down. Then, in December, actually December 11th, 1995, she was just to go in for an angioplasty. Well, three hours later, she was on the operating table for a triple bypass. And I happened to be there because I was the one that was always in town when she needed me. Except when you were, Gwen, when I wasn't there. And thank you so much for all of those times, too. Um, so she had open heart surgery and um, she, uh, before that though, uh, 
after she got the angioplasty, she, she, you know, she got a little bit discouraged. Now that's hard for you to believe, but um, every day she would go walk five miles at this park, not too far from her office. And uh, before the angioplasty, she would just be so determined. She wanted to do it in so much time. And so she'd whiz by the other people out there. Well, you know, after the angioplasty, uh, we talked about it. And I said, you know, Karen, this is just a change in your mission field. Your mission field has changed. And so, so after that, then when she went over to the park, she wouldn't walk quite so fast. She'd take time to actually get to know the people. And the picture of, of her and the Kraft family included a man that she met in that park, Wally. Wally's wife had worked at Disneyland. And so after she retired, he got free passes. So he would, uh, so Karen and he, after they became friends, would make arrangements that any time there was a missionary in town, uh, Wally would uh, give those passes to those people. And that's what happened in that picture. And that's why Wally was there. But there were so many other people that Karen grew to know and love in that park because that was her new mission field. After her open heart surgery, then she went to cardiac rehab. 18 years cardiac rehab. 18 years, two or three days per week, depending on whatever the insurance would allow. And that became her new mission field. She would come in and she would be one that would always talk and encourage those people who maybe just got through surgery and who were depressed. She ran into a lot of depressed people who had just had problems with their heart. And looking at her on the treadmill, you know, there she was, you know, she was just doing her thing, was an encouragement. And her love for all of those people was her new mission field. And so she grabbed onto that. And all of her heart problems was just a new way for her to bring Jesus to new people. And of course, yes, we traveled. Um, Asia in 89, uh, Latin America, 91, Africa, 93, China, Mongolia in 95. Uh, and then came her heart surgeries. And uh, I will talk a little bit about the one experience that was probably the hardest in her life, April 4th, 1996. It was Monday Thursday, 26 years ago, this week. Uh, Karen was having a procedure at Downey Hospital and I was in the waiting room. She was in the cath lab. They were doing a procedure to see whether she, uh, her arteries were big enough for a stint so that she wouldn't have to have heart surgery again. Well, I was sitting in the waiting room and probably working on Easter cards or something. Anyway, all of a sudden over the loudspeaker, code blue, cath lab. And I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good. Not too long later, a woman came out and asked me to go into another room with her and, and told me, uh, your friend Karen has had a car has experienced a cardiac arrest. They are working on her in the cath lab. And um, we will uh, keep you up updated. 
Well, that woke me up. So I immediately got on the phone. I called Wimple, told them to pray. I called Grace Lutheran, told them to pray. I called my church in Sunnyvale, told them to pray. And uh, when I talked to Grace, they said, uh, well, our pastor Dave is on the way because he was going to be visiting Karen after her procedure. Pastor Dave Sorensen had only been in the ministry maybe a year. He didn't know what he was going to walk into when he walked through those doors into the waiting room. So we both uh, began to pray. But first he called Grace again and he re-emphasized to them, you gotta be praying for Karen. And you know, in those times, my prayer became very simple. Please God, let me see Karen's smile again. Well, the end of that day, I didn't see a smile, but Karen was in the ICU and she made it. The doctor said it was a miracle because all that they had done uh, wasn't working and then all of a sudden her heart came back on its own. So God answered that prayer on, on that Easter Sunday because all of her vitals were just going up and down. And so on Easter Sunday, they decided that we're gonna give her two units of blood. And that got all of her vitals stable. And so Karen had her own re resurrection on that Easter day. So um, God answered my prayer and I got to see her smile for 24 more years. And that smile <laughs> would get you. I, I, I mean, you can just look at all of the pictures from when she was a little kid. That smile would just draw you in. And her love for people. She loved all of you who are here today. And if those are, are, if there are people who are online, I'm sure that she loved you too because she meant enough for you to want to be here. And so I thank God for Karen. I thank God the way that uh, Karen's witness and her love for God's mission to the world when we, we were at Urbana 87 and the first speaker was Billy Graham. The last speaker was Tony Campolo asking these young students to give their lives to Jesus. And it was in that, in that time that God hit my heart to the need that there is more than just what goes on around your church's block, but that God's mission is to the world. And I have been an ad, I have been an advocate in my church and in our synod almost ever since then. And I will continue to be until God calls me home. And I thank God for all of those moments where we would, would just kind of look at something and then we just both burst out laughing. And that music that you heard was on a CD that uh, she played often in her office. And as I was driving back from here, maybe two weeks ago, <laughs> um, I was trying to figure out what music am I going to play when all of these wonderful pictures of Karen are shown, and I really didn't even know what those pictures were yet. Um, and so I put in this one CD and 
by uh, Steve Hall, who plays a wonderful piano, and she loved his his albums and uh, played them over and over and over and over in her office. And track one of this one album, uh, and the album was called On Eagle's Wings. That first track, that was the one. On Eagle's Wings and Wind Beneath My Wings, because we were the wind beneath each other's wings. You know, I could go on, but I am going to close with um, the lyrics of a song that I read at Karen's um, inurnment service, December 18th, 2020, at my church up in Sunnyvale. That is what you saw at the end of the pictures. And it's entitled, Friends Are Friends Forever, and the lyrics are by Michael W. Smith. And I have copies. You can pick one up in the hall if you would like a copy. Packing up the dreams God planted in the fertile soil of you. Can't, be lo can't believe the hopes he's granted means a chapter in your life is through. But we'll keep you close as always. It won't even seem you've gone because our hearts in big and small ways will keep the love that keeps us strong. And friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never because the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go in the Father's hands, we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. With the faith and love God's given, springing from the hope we know, we will pray the joy you'll live in is the strength that now you show. But we'll keep you close as always. It won't even seem you've gone because our hearts in big and small ways will keep the love that keeps us strong. And friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never, because the welcome will not end, though it's hard to let you go. In the Father's hands we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. So I have been friends with Karen for 36 years because that friendship continues. And I hope that as you live through your health challenges, look for what is your uh, new uh, mission field. That is what God has in store for you. And thank you for your love today. Thank you, Sue. I'm glad you shared that message with us and look forward to your original message in, in Hope Hall, too. That's good. Invite you to stand as we bring our prayers to God this day. Holy, holy, holy are you, God. May the whole earth be full of your glory. With Karen, with all the saints who have gone before us, may we continually hear your call upon our lives. By your Holy Spirit, lead us to say, Here I am, Lord, send me, and to hear and obey that call every day of our lives, out of love for you, out of love for your beloved world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise that everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. Bless the feet, the voices, the ears of all those who are sent to proclaim the good news of our Savior. Strengthen faith as we hear your word preached and proclaimed. Thank you for calling our sister in Christ, Karen, to 50 plus years of ministry as a missionary, as a leader in prayer, a teacher, an encourager, a preacher, a partner in ministry, a friend. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that she is now numbered among the great multitude that no one can count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, now singing praises to you eternally. From her time on earth among the nations, we thank you for her witness in Uruguay, Bolivia, Nepal, China, Afghanistan, Buryatia, and so many other places and other congregations and schools and conferences and retreats and places in our country as well. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to bless the ministries of our World Mission Prayer League that Karen loves so much for past and present staff, missionaries, workers. We pray, as in our newsletter this month, for Kenya, DRC, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Philippines, the islands, East Asia, Central Asia, South Asia, Albania, Bolivia, Ecuador, Canada, and the USA. And with constant prayers for peace for Ukraine, for the 78 people groups there, for the millions of refugees, for the surrounding countries, and for Russia to radically change and seek peace. God, in your mercy. And now, dear God, we thank you for this time of remembering and thanking you for Karen. Bless all the seeds of faith that she planted. Motivate all of us who are mentored by her to be bold in our witness to Jesus. Give us hope and comfort as we entrust Karen to your never-failing love which sustained her in this life through all her physical ailments, but through it all, your abundant grace was present. Thank you for Sue and for Karen's family. Thank you for all the dear friends that have surrounded her and even the people who came into her life for a brief moment and they experienced your love through her. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because Jesus lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
pray together. Let's pray. Into your your hands, hands, O merciful merciful Savior, Savior, we commend your servant, Karen Merkel. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming today. Uh, Before our closing hymn, I wanted to extend the invitation to continue the celebration of Karen's life and the fellowship together over in Hope Hall. Uh, In this uh, this closing hymn, in the first verse, we pastors will be leading out the group that we led in. Uh, You remain here, and after you finish the closing song, then you will move out as well. I ask you to continue to move out until you get outside of the, uh, the narthex doors. We tend to get bunched up when we, uh, when we hang around inside. With that again, I thank you.